Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. This is the Renault Kyger, a car which has been lying with me for more than a year now. In fact, I got so bored of driving this in Mumbai that I drove it all the way from Mumbai to Hyderabad. Now, I have good information and good knowledge and good whatever about how is this car to live with. So, in this video, I'm going to be telling you what's impressive and what's not about the Renault Kyger. The biggest con of the Kyger is the fuel efficiency. This being the turbo drinks a lot of fuel. I only get single digit mileage numbers. It's returning around 7 to 8 kilometers per liter. So if you're looking for fuel efficiency, probably get the non-turbo variant, but that just does not move. The second con is the refinement or rather the lack of it. Listen to it. Because this is a three-cylinder engine and you can feel the vibrations. Listen to it. Vibrations here, there on the steering, on the gear lever. And as soon as you accelerate, well, it's refined lower down. But in the higher end of the rev range, it becomes quite noisy. And this being a CVT has a rubber band effect. Yeah, it's a very noisy engine. But forget this being a three-cylinder noisy engine. Even the insulation is terrible in this car. You can hear a lot of the road noise, the wind noise, the tire noise. And making matters worse is the suspension, which definitely is very loud. You hit a bump and you can hear the suspension. Like, there's a bump here, I know. And I'm going to hit it intentionally and listen to the sound it makes. The suspension crashes through. Yeah, it completely crashes through bad bumps. So they have cut completely in terms of, I mean, they've cut corners in terms of insulation of this car. Just very poorly insulated. You should carry your noise cancelling headphones while driving the Kyger. The third con is the steering feel or rather the lack of it. It is completely lifeless. There's no feel, there's no feedback and taking a U-turn is a pain because look at it. Lock to lock, there's so much effort and then the steering really slowly centers. Yeah, but taking a U-turn is very painful in this car. You have to really keep turning the steering. Lock to lock is just way too much. The fourth con are the brakes. They're very lackluster. Yeah, initial bite is lacking and they're also very squeaky at times. If you don't drive the car for a few days, the brakes start squeaking. That's a very expensive phone which has just sacrificed itself to show you the braking performance or rather the lack of braking performance of the Kyger. Yeah, braking performance should be a lot better in spite of the fact that this has 16 inch wheels, wide enough tires, yet the brakes are not reassuring at all. In fact, after driving this car, you feel that every other car has an air brake. Lastly, not really a con, but something very irritating in the Kyger is the unlock button. When you stop the car and turn it off, the doors won't automatically unlock. You have to press that button in the center console. And if you try to open the door, the doors will not open unless and until you press that button. So that's something I have not yet come to terms with in spite of the fact that I've been driving this car for quite some time now. The first pro has to be the features in the Kyger. I know it does miss out on a lot of features like there's no sunroof, it doesn't even have cruise control. In fact, there are dummy buttons on the steering wheel for cruise control and the windshield wiper has only one nozzle for the spray, quite cheap. In fact, there are a lot of cheap plastics here on the dashboard, but all can be forgiven because this car has certain features which really impress you. Like wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connectivity, a feature that cars costing twice the Kyger don't have. Yes, France just beat Korea here. Another feature which cars costing twice the price don't have is a mirror on the driver's side sun visor. Yes, that's a boon, especially if you are into doing makeup. This car also gets a cool glove box, a PM 2.5 air filter, rear AC vents and ambient lighting, which is a cool feature to have honestly. You also get Archimedes 3D sound system, which is decent in terms of quality. There's push button start and the climate control air conditioning is very nicely done. The 8-inch infotainment screen is slick enough and the quality of the rear parking camera is also decent. But it's really the 7-inch screen in the instrument cluster which will blow your mind. The graphics are actually quite rich and as soon as you change drive modes, well, you get something which actually looks quite cool for a car of this price. 
This rear wiper auto engages in the reins when you get into reverse. Smart guy. There is no auto dimming IRVM and this one has cracked over time going over potholes. And the AC performance is quite poor. This car needs a stronger AC compressor because in the summers, even with the AC on full blast, it's a sauna. Guys. Oh, come on. <laughs> Most cars have roof rails just for aesthetic purpose, but the Kyger has roof rails which are very much functional because you can add up to 50 kgs of weight here, further boosting the practicality of this car. But my personal favorite feature in this car is the keyless entry system because it has a proximity sensor. All I need to do is keep the key with me and walk towards the car, it automatically unlocks. And as soon as I walk away from the car, it automatically locks. Wow! The second pro is the engine. It offers punchy performance. That is quick enough because this is a light car. Now this 1 litre turbo petrol engine produces 100 horsepower and 160 Newton meters of torque. Performance is actually very good. This car doesn't feel lackluster at all when you want to go fast. And then it's also decently fun to drive because the engine sounds sporty in the higher end of the rev range. But with this CVT gearbox now, it becomes quite noisy for my liking. Yes, it could have been oh, honest. But it could have been a lot better, honestly, in terms of the way the gearbox responds. But then obviously rubber band effect is a given. It also wheel spins at times, but if you get the manual, you're going to enjoy a lot more. Don't even think of the one liter naturally aspirated petrol engine because that is absolutely lackluster that I don't even want to tell you the performance numbers. But here, look at the way it pulls. Now I'm in sport mode, so it tells me how much power and torque graphically it's consuming in real time. So it's like a bar, not telling you the exact figures. But yes, performance really surprises you. Look at the way this car is actually pulling. Very surprising, very much fun as well. But then there are three drive modes and the eco mode is very lackluster. It honestly feels like someone has put a stone below the accelerator pedal because the car just does not move at all when you get into eco mode. So yes, that's done in the interest of fuel efficiency. Yet I'm getting an eco score of, rather an eco driving tip score of 20 out of 100, which means I am probably the problem and not the car's engine, but definitely the car's engine is very slow. The regular drive mode, which is the normal drive mode, is in which I have driven the car most of the times because I don't want to do sporty performance with a Kyger and I don't want to do lackluster performance in the eco mode. So yes, the drive modes really help here, but the sport mode really surprises you. Performance is actually going to put a smile on your face, definitely. In fact, it also wheel spins like that. Yeah, redlining at 6000 RPM, staying there all the time because CVT gearbox. And then there's an L mode as well, which is for losers, L for losers, don't use it, just kidding. L mode is something I slot into almost always accidentally when I'm going from reverse to drive mode. And that's something I really kind of get irritated with because then it keeps revving and revving and revving and revving. The third pro has to be the practicality and safety of the Kyger. This car got 4 star rating from Global NCAP and I'm not too sure how it's going to fare now because of the new regime but it has got 4 airbags. It doesn't feel that safe enough, somehow it feels light, it doesn't feel like a tank but yes, it is safe enough. And talking about practicality, this car has got a lot of practical things inside. Firstly, there's a lot of storage spaces. It's got two glove boxes. There's space around the gear lever. It's a massive storage space which you can open and close as well. There's a place to keep your phone. There's space down to keep nicks and knacks. And the boot is also big enough at more than 400 liters, 405 liters, somewhere around that. So yes, it's quite a practical car. And then when I look at it, I realize the design is actually quite good. Renault has done a fantastic job in the design of the Kyger. In fact, even the design of the alloy wheels are quite nice. It gets a rear spoiler, which is also quite sporty. I love the headlights, I love the taillights. I think this is a very good looking car, don't you think so? Further improving the practicality of the Kyger is the fact that there's good amount of space at the rear, but it is one of the narrower cars in the segment and that's the reason centre passenger does not get a head. Yeah, there is no centre headrest, but at least Renault has thought about the other two passengers at the rear and given a rear centre armrest. I only wish that this car had USB-C charging ports because I don't have a USB-A charging port at all. Now, someone can gift me obviously, but come on, all of us are moving to USB-C, including Apple. Apple. Further boosting the practicality of the Kyger is the fact that it has got 205 mm of ground clearance, which means bad roads, worse roads, broken roads, no problem for this car. In fact, you can also just take it wherever you feel like, not an issue at all here. Look at me, just go. <laughs> Amazing! 
the fourth pro are the dynamics of the kaiger other than the lackluster steering and the noisy suspension bacha kya fir this car's dynamics are actually quite good because even though the suspension is on the stiffer side ride quality is decent handling is also decent body roll is decently well contained actually and as i keep driving this car with full throttle my score is reduced to 17 out of 100 which is absolutely terrible to say the least but yeah dynamics are good enough especially if you're driving in the city you're going to like the light steering which makes it very easy to park this car small dimensions also help and the fact that it's a very easy car to drive obviously out on the highway the handling is just not up to the mark but in the city the handling of this car is more than enough because decent body control body roll is there but you can ignore that when driving at slow speeds so overall i think reno has done a fantastic job it kind of feels like a mini duster which is a huge compliment in itself and then hitting bad bumps i mean it takes everything in its stride only thing is the suspension is super duper duper noisy yeah someone needs to do something about the suspension of this car Clearly the Kaiger has its negatives but i feel the positives far outweigh the negative this is a very impressive car in fact my wife nurin really loves it because in hyderabad there is a lot of traffic and this is a fantastic city car just don't have huge expectations from it insulation levels could be definitely better performance is good mileage certainly needs to be better but overall it's a good package in fact this car is priced for rupees 7.62 lakhs all the way to 13.29 lakhs for the top of the line variant which is this one and all the prices are of course on road mumbai so as i see it reno definitely has a winner on its hand it's slightly more expensive than the magnite but i would any day prefer to be seen in a reno than a nissan at least in india thank you so much for watching this video if you like this video make sure to give it the thumbs up that's a like button and also subscribe to the channel now let me know which should be my next long term car mercedes g wagon please